boom-ba-da-dum. Howdy, welcome to BanjoBenClark.com. I'm your host, Banjo Ben, here on your favorite website that teaches you how to play banjo, mandolin, and guitar. Today, we have Red Wing on guitar. What a guitar we have. This is the first video I've made with my uh, 75th anniversary Martin HD28, and it is a beast, and I'm loving it. Um, last week we did banjo, I did some Alan Mundy banjo versions, and then the week before we did mandolin for this tune, and then on Facebook my Gold Pick members were like, we have to have a guitar. So we did it. Now here's what we're going to do. We're going to briefly go through that basic melody because I think it's important for us to have that foundation that we can anchor ourselves to. Then we're going to spend 20 minutes alone on the advanced version. And I'm going to go through each measure of that advanced version and show you how I derived it from the basic melody. So this is another one of those lessons where I kind of teach you how to build solos. Not only are you going to learn Red Wing, you're going to learn how to take basic melody of all kinds of things and turn it into more of an advanced solo. If you're watching this on Facebook or on YouTube here in a moment, I'll ask you to come over to the website, BanjoBenClark.com. You can join as a Gold Peak member. You can have access to hundreds of videos, tabs, MP3 rhythm tracks. I do them each and every week. This is about a 30-minute total video lesson here. I'm going to teach the basic version. I'm going to have slow play versions for you. Then we're going to go through that advanced version. Then I've got three different speeds of MP3 rhythm tracks you can download, as well as the tabs for both versions. So I've got all you need and a bag of rice over there on BanjoBenClark.com. Let's look at this basic melody for Red Wing. Let's learn Red Wing on guitar. This is a great old fiddle tune. It's in the key of G. And we're going to briefly go through the basic melody here, and that's just to, to concrete that in your mind. And then as we go into the advanced portion, we'll be referring back to that. So I invite you to, if you're watching on the site, go ahead and click on that tab link and uh, download the basic or both the basic and the advanced tab so that we can refer back to that together. Now, as we throw up the tab there, you'll see the, uh, the tab here and you, we've got little pick stroke directions beneath each one of the notes. So the down arrows are down strokes, up arrows would be up strokes. And we're going to start just by walking in on the second beat that first measure, starting on this open D string. Okay, and I use my uh, index and ring finger. Now, this is a fiddle tune, as I mentioned, and so with a fiddle, it's easy for them to hold out long notes. It's not so much for guitar players or for mandolin players, so what we're going to do is employ this uh, fiddle-type technique. I did the same thing with the mandolin version. It's called a shuffle pattern. And a shuffle pattern looks like we have there in measure two. It has a quarter note, the downstroke, and it's got two eighth notes afterwards. So shuffle pattern back to back would sound like this. And that's what we're going to use, or a variation of it, to play this melody in the basic version. Of course, we won't need that in the advanced version because we're going to be doing lots of filler notes. So measure two is just simply that. Measure three, we're going to jump up to the third fret of that B string, do the same thing. And measure four is just four quarter notes. We're sticking right to that melody. And then measure five is just like measure three. So I'll just play measures one through five slowly for you, but I've got another video here on the site where I play it much slower than this all the way through. Now measure six, the melody starts moving a little bit more, but we're going to keep this shuffle pattern kind of going. That's what measure six sounds like. Measure seven. When we're getting to measure eight, we've got all quarter notes, but I want you to skip up and play that second fret with your index finger, and then you're going to have to release it quickly to get to the second fret on the D string. So I play those with the same finger, and then I have my ring finger to play this fourth fret. Then we'll leave it there for measure nine and walk down. And then measure 10, we're going to go back into some repeating. So we've got the A part repeating here, starting in measure 10. So measure six through 10 slowly. So we've already seen measure 10. As we get into measure 11, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, we've all seen this before at the beginning of the song. And then when we get to measure 16, we're wrapping up that first, this A part, getting ready to go into the B part. 
So we're just going to turn it around here. It starts with that second fret again on the G string, then jump down, grab it on the D string, fourth fret, open, and then measure 17. We're going to end on that open G string. And then what's very, um, what catches your ear about Red Wing is this little walk into the B part. Okay, so that's, that's one way to really identify Red Wing. So we're going to jump up and grab that with our ring finger on the E string and walk chromatically down. Chromatically just means we don't skip any frets. Now as we get into the B part, um, the chord changes. The chords are a little different and our melody is different as well. That's why it's a B part. But we've got a long E note held out here in measure 18. We're just going to, since we don't have a fiddle bow to play one long E string, we're just going to do this shuffle pattern. In measure 19, just walk right up that scale. Measure 20. So I'll play 16 through 20 for you. Measure 21. Pretty simple still. All this is simple because it's the basic melody. When we get to measure 22, we start out there on that third fret of the second string, and then we go down to the second fret of the G string. And, and I would advise you to maybe hold down that ring finger as you play down on that second fret. We're going to be coming back to this ring finger, but it, uh, it helps with some overtones there. Measure 24 is the exact same as measure 20. Here in 25, we've got that walk down again. But this time I, I just throw in, uh, two eighth notes in there on that third fret, just to change it up a little bit. But uh, 21 through 25. In 26, we have some more repeating going on. So 26, 27, 28, 29 is just like measures 18 through 22. I'll play this line slowly for you. Seen all this. When we get to 31, we're going to change it up a little bit because we're coming to the end of the B part. It starts on the second fret, jump for two eighth notes up on the B string, then walk it down. And then technically, the song ends, that solo ends on the first beat of 32, but I've just gave us a little tag lick here. It starts out on that G string. Down the second fret, open, and we're just going to walk down the scale from there. Third fret, second fret, open, and we'll end on that low uh, E string on the third fret, okay? At that point, if you're playing these two solos back to back, as we look at the advanced version here in a second, you'll play that low E string and then go right into your walk for the advanced version. Uh, now for this next video segment, let's play this slow version, this basic version, all the way through very, very slowly. Then we'll jump into the advanced version. Mm -hmm. 